Hey guys, Nintendrew here. Mario has been a gaming icon for more than three decades, and apart from getting his start in the arcades, as a Nintendo property, he generally appears on Nintendo consoles. But there have been a few occasions throughout his storied history that Mario has stepped out of his comfort zone and appeared away from his home field. And I'm not just talking about this masterpiece. <laughs> we gotta find the princess. And you gotta help us. <laughs> so today we're gonna take a look at five fully licensed Mario games that were released for non-Nintendo platforms. Let's get to it. First up is Mario Teaches Typing. As you might imagine, Mario Teaches Typing was an educational title intended to help young children learn basic typing skills. The title was first published for Microsoft's MS-DOS platform and was ported to both Windows and Mac a few years later. This is a pretty appropriate game to start with because I sort of have a special nostalgia for this one. I actually grew up with this title. You start the game by choosing to play as either Mario, Luigi, or Princess Peach and test your typing skills through four different challenge modes. As you successfully type letters and eventually words and sentences, Mario and company advance through levels defeating classic Mario enemies and making their way to the goal at the end of each exercise. A sequel, Mario Teaches Typing 2, was also developed by Interplay and published six years later in 1997. Of course, the game has not aged very well, and educational titles generally get a bad rap anyway, but I'd bet if some of you were kids in the 90s, you might also have some fond memories of this one from your childhood. Next is Super Mario Bros. Special. If you've never heard of this title, you are truly missing out. This one is universally considered the definitive version of the original Super Mario Bros. Nah, I'm just kidding. Super Mario Bros. Special is a reimagining of the NES title developed and published by Hudson Soft for the PC-88 and Sharp X1, two Japanese home computers from the mid-80s. It's not really clear why or how Hudson managed to secure the rights from Nintendo to make their own Super Mario title, but regardless, this happened. Because the PC-88 and Sharp X1 were both less powerful than the NES hardware, this version suffered from a myriad of technical limitations resulting in limited color palettes, sprite flickering, and numerous bugs and glitches. The most apparent difference from its NES counterpart is the screen-by-screen -screen scrolling effect, which is a bit reminiscent of the mechanics from Mega Man. But this was not the only change in design. Rather than directly copying the levels from the original, the devs at Hudson built all new original worlds from scratch. Not only that, but the game actually seems deliberately crafted to confuse and punish players who are familiar with the original. The physics of running and jumping are totally different, each stage has much less time to complete, and on top of that there are some really odd choices in level design. Every once in a while you'll find a conspicuously placed pipe that you would think should warp you to a new area, but in most cases you just can't enter them. Another example is there are often invisible blocks placed in unexpected areas, such as directly above a pit, which almost feels like someone took some infuriating Super Mario Maker levels and transported them back to 1986. Because of its almost sadistic design, Super Mario Bros. Special is notoriously difficult, but funny enough, despite the technical limitations of the hardware, the game actually does a pretty great job of challenging your expectations as a player, and some gamers have even chosen to call this release the true Super Mario Bros. Lost Levels. As a result, this bizarre port has gained a limited cult following in the decades since its launch. After that, we've got Mario Bros. for Atari 2600. Alongside its arcade debut, the original Mario Bros. was also ported to a number of home computers and game consoles in the early 80s, including the Atari 2600, a version which predated its release on the NES. Although this version is widely considered to be the least faithful of all Mario Bros. ports, it's still a rather impressive game by the standards of the Atari 2600. Some of the game's limitations include a maximum of two enemies on screen at any given time, and some clear downgrades in the quality of art due to the system's graphical shortcomings. Other than that, many of the game's features were successfully brought over intact, including its simultaneous multiplayer mode. All things considered, I think it's a fairly competent version of the arcade classic, and it's certainly one of the more technically impressive titles for the 2600. If nothing else, it's an interesting bit of trivia that this historic Nintendo title made its home console debut on another company's system. Alright, number four is Mario is Missing. This one may be the most recognizable title of the bunch because, in addition to coming out on PC, this game also saw scaled-back ports for both the NES and Super Nintendo. Mario is Missing is yet another educational Mario title, this time geared toward teaching kids about world geography and culture. 
Funny enough, this is the first Mario game to feature Luigi as the only playable character, predating Luigi's Mansion by nearly a decade. Essentially, the story is that Bowser has kidnapped Mario and is keeping him hostage in a castle he's built in Antarctica. Bowser has a dastardly plan to buy an outrageous number of hair dryers, which he plans to use to melt the polar ice caps and devastate humanity. What's more, he's sent his Koopa Troopas to the far corners of the Earth to steal valuable artifacts to fund this operation. Genius. So basically, you play as Luigi hopping through magic doorways and running around from country to country, accosting strangers and asking them existential questions like, where am I? What is this? Where is the nearest Koopa? And eventually, you recover the stolen artifacts, return them to their rightful owners, and progress through Bowser's castle. As you may have noticed, the PC version is also the original source of the Ouija meme, deriving from the game's questionable pixel art. As you might imagine, this one was not very well received, but regardless, it is a fascinating piece of early 90s Nintendo history. And finally, the last game on today's list is Mario's Game Gallery. Mario's Game Gallery is a collection of board and card games and was later re-released for PC and Mac as Mario's Fundamentals. The compilation features five games including Checkers, Go Fish, Dominoes, Backgammon, and legally distinct Yahtzee. Although most of you probably remember Super Mario 64 as the first game to feature Charles Martinet in the role of Mario, Mario's Game Gallery was actually the first Mario title to feature his iconic voice, and boy does he have some great lines. Knocky knocky! Who's there? Giovanni! Giovanni who? Giovanni hurry up and play for crying out loud? As far as the gameplay is concerned, I swear, half the time Mario straight up cheats. This AI is too good. I'll be like six matches ahead in GoFish and BAM! Mario comes out of nowhere with the comeback. No joke, I thought I was at least decent at checkers, but when recording for this episode, the first match I played against Mario ended in a stalemate with zero jumps. I didn't even know that was possible. But regardless, the games are all functional and overall the implementation isn't half bad. Despite its simplicity, Mario's Game Gallery presents a pretty solid set of casual minigames. Alright guys, that's about it for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed this look at some of Mario's forays into outside territory. Of course, this list is not by any means definitive, so if you guys did enjoy the video and would like to see more, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to Nintendo for all sorts of cool gaming content, and make sure to share the video with any friends who might find it interesting. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey guys, thanks again for checking out the video and for making it all the way to the end. Hope you enjoyed. As always, I've got links to all my social media in the description below. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Discord, that sort of thing. And if you'd like to help out even more, I've got a link to my Patreon on the right side of your screen. Otherwise, I hope you'll look out for the next video. Take care.